I want to bring in the Queensland opposition leader, David Chrisafulli, now. Uh, David, good to see you. Thanks for your time. So you've got this story. Plus, you've got the item before it, which was the victim of last weekend's shocking stabbing in Fortitude Valley. That's just two of many cases. What's going on? Uh, a generation of untouchables who know that their rights outweigh the rights of the victim. And in the end, a decision was taken, a conscious decision, when the government was elected eight years ago to water down that act. And on the back of it, you've just got kids who just know that their way around the law. And just think of the, the heartbreak and the disconnection for that family. You know, they, they've, sure, they've lost their pride and joy, but what troubles me more is that two young boys under the age of 12 um, have to go to bed tonight and know that someone just walks straight over the top of them mm. and breaks their safe space. That, that, that's just so troubling. And it's on repeat, day after day. And the only person who can't say the word youth crime crisis in Queensland is the Premier. Everybody else knows it, they acknowledge it, they want to see action on it, and we keep putting forward solutions that the government refuses to adopt. So we had the, the overhaul of the youth crime laws already this year, so why is that coming up so short? I mean, you had to support that, right? You had to support that, plus changes to the, the Human Rights Act. It, it, does it just not go far enough? Why isn't it working? Peter, everything they've done, and they've tried half a dozen of these so-called ten-point plans and five-point plans, it's always been about tinkering around the edges and it's always been about just relieving that political pressure valve rather than dealing with it properly. So these are the solutions that we put on the table that the government's got to adopt. Firstly, they have to acknowledge there are 72 fewer police today than before the last election. They promised an additional 1,450. It's gone backwards. That's their own figures. But it's more than that. We have to make consequences for actions matter. We've got to put the rights of the victim ahead of the rights of the offender, and the Youth Justice Act needs to be rewritten. We have to unshackle the judiciary, remove detention as a last resort, which is a provision in the Act that cr continues to create carnage. And finally, we have to invest in gold standard early intervention because, quite frankly, we've got to turn kids around before they're going into a campsite and pinching a couple of cars, before they're in a street stabbing somebody who's just on a night out. It's absolute madness at the moment, and the government's got to listen to those solutions, admit we are in crisis, and get on and do it. So you've got to overhaul the already overhauled youth crime laws? Well, we've got to fundamentally rewrite it, Peter. And, and, and every time they've tinkered with it, we've pointed to the flaws in what they're proposing and they haven't listened. Let me use GPS trackers as a classic example. Over two years ago, their X point plan at that time, the, the, the underpinning of it was we're going to fit young offenders with GPS trackers. Well, we looked at the legislation. One of the reasons why a young offender could choose not to have a GPS tracker is because they didn't want to wear one as though it was a fashion accessory. Well, what do you expect would happen? Mm. And in the last couple of years, we've had less than a dozen of them fitted. It's a wow. broken system. The rights of the victim just don't matter, and that's got to change. All right, David Chrisafulli, Queensland's Opposition Leader, thanks for your time.